Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. As always, it's a joy to be able to bring the good news of Jesus to you. The text that we're going to consider this morning is the epistle lesson appointed for this 17th Sunday after Pentecost. It comes to us from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 18. If you haven't already listened to the lesson being read, we encourage you to do that now. I will be primarily focused on verse 13 of the lesson this morning that says, For it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Star Wars Episode 5, called The Empire Strikes Back, is probably my favorite of all the Star Wars movies. And there's a scene in it where Luke Skywalker, who is the hero of the story, is talking to his mentor, Obi-Wan Kenobi, about Darth Vader, who is the villain, and as we will find out, Luke Skywalker's father. But he won't know that until the end of the movie. While he's talking to Obi-Wan, he's defending Darth Vader, and he says, there is still good in him. To which Obi-Wan replies, he's more machine now than man. Later in episode six, The Return of the Jedi, Luke's going to say the same thing, only this time talking directly to Darth Vader himself. He's going to say, I know there's still good in you. The emperor hasn't driven it from you fully. Now, there's good theology in that. And before I get going, no, you shouldn't get your theology from Star Wars or from any other movie, for that matter. Movies are meant to entertain. But sometimes you run across little gems like this. Now, what makes this good theology? It's this, that, that Luke realizes that the good is in Darth Vader. It doesn't come from Darth Vader. Even Obi-Wan is a little disconcerted. He points to Darth Vader himself and says, ah, he's more machine now than man, twisted and evil. Well, Darth Vader was twisted and evil, but so are you and so am I. The scriptures bear that out and that is where we get our theology. We are told in two Psalms, and it's reiterated by Paul in Romans chapter 3, verse 10, that there is no one good, not even one. Jesus, in his Sermon on the Mount, tells us that we are evil. That's right, we are evil. So how, uh, how being evil, are we to do any good in this world? How are we to do the work of God while we're evil? Well, Philippians 2.13 tells us, for it is God who works in us that will and that ability to work for his good to work for his good purposes only comes through his power that he creates in us. So it is in us and not of us. I had a professor uh, while I was at the seminary, his name was Francis Rossau, and he made this illustration concerning the idiom that sometimes people use when some, somebody does something nice for them, they'll say, how good of you? And he said, you know, it's a popular idiom and everybody understands what they're saying, but it's heretical. Because nothing good comes from us. Everything that's good comes from within us. It's in us, not of us. And so he said, if you want to be theologically correct, when somebody does something nice to you, don't say, 
oh, how good of you. So say, oh, how good in you. It's kind of awkward English, but at least you'll be correct theologically. The good that we do, any good that we do, comes from what God has created in us by the power of his word. We know by reading the scriptures that God works through means, and his means are the word of God and the sacraments that he has given us, which are nothing more, and that's not to minimize them, but our sacraments, baptism and Holy Communion, are nothing more than the word of God attached to physical elements, attached to signs so that we can see them, feel them, taste them. It's the word of God. And so when we're baptized, we are baptized, we are bathed in the word. And when we take Holy Communion, we eat and drink the word, the word made flesh. And so we take into ourselves the body and blood of Jesus Christ, not in any kind of carnal, gross way, but in a sacramental way, we receive God into ourselves so that now good is in us. But it is God who is good in us, not ourselves, for we have to die. And in this life, our dying needs to be every day, dying to ourselves and living to what God has created in us through Christ Jesus. Every day, living through Christ Jesus and dying to ourselves. So let it be like Paul says, that we would have the same mind in us that is in Jesus Christ, who although he was God, emptied himself and took on the form of a slave, obedient unto death, even death on a cross, that we would humble ourselves every day Die to ourselves every day, not by our own power, because by ourselves we are nothing. We are twisted and evil. We are bent in every way against God. For there indeed is no one good, not even one, but in us, in us is a new creation that God has put in us by the power of his word. And by, the, by that new creation, we are able to live our lives in accordance with his will and his ways. Let us be like Christ knowing that there is nothing good that comes from us. But there is a world of good in us. For it is Jesus Christ who comes to us in word and in sacrament and fills us with himself so that we might do his work in this world. Amen.